and they notice something moving around a headstone. Pretty soon, that something leaps from behind this headstone right in front of their car. This causes them to completely swerve off the side of the road to avoid a head-on collision. So they pull over to the side, regain their composure, I'm assuming, and then get out to look around. Located deep in the woods of North Carolina sits the home of a tale very well known to locals, but a pretty well kept secret outside of it. At least that's what I think. I didn't know about this place until I googled haunted places in North Carolina near me and it popped up. So to my full knowledge, it's a pretty well kept secret, but it's a fantastic story. The town's name that this legend resides in is called Valle Crucis, which is Latin for the Valley of the Cross. The town was given this name due to the fact that there are streams that cross in a way that looks just like a cross. It's a very quiet town nestled away right beside of Boone, North Carolina, which is a pretty big college town, but this is a quiet little corner tucked away. There have been stories for generations upon generations in this town of people going missing and being mangled in the woods. Locals are said to know exactly when and where to go and not to go if they decide to leave their homes at night. There is a story that is said to have happened in the 80s that really put this legend on the map, although locals had been telling it for generations. So one night, two college students from nearby Appalachian State University are driving around. They're looking around at the scenery. It's a full moon, so they're just watching the moonlight radiate off of the trees and just light things up for them. So eventually, they make their way down this very secluded road that holds a church and cemetery. I can never say this word right, so I'm gonna like read it and try to do it but the church's name is St. John's Episcopal Church. Episcopal? Episcopal? I don't know, but it is that term. Anyways, back to these two students in the car. So right before they get to the church, they're already at the cemetery because you have to sort of pass it first. And they notice something moving around a headstone. Pretty soon that something leaps from behind this headstone right in front of their car. This causes them to completely swerve off the side of the road to avoid a head-on collision. So they pull over to the side, regain their composure, I'm assuming, and then get out to look around. They are met with a pair of glowing red eyes deep in the woods behind a tree. And as they're looking at this eyes more and more, they see that they are attached to what looks like a dog. But it is not just any dog. This dog is huge. As they keep looking, they notice that this large, at least human-sized dog is covered in black fur, has yellow teeth, like very sharp yellow teeth. And did I mention that it was huge? Because it was huge. They make an agreement that neither of them saw anything. They calmly get into the car, but once they calmly get into that car, they speed off. They are going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour down this road, and this dog is not only keeping up speed, but it is closing in on this car. So they go over the bridge where this stream forms a cross and the dog stops following them, just completely stops right at the bridge. They drove to a local diner and told everyone what they saw, just completely panicked out of their mind, wanting a cup of coffee and to just talk and have someone listen to them. Word spread fast and their story is still talked about to this day in the town and beyond. They are of course not the first people to experience this at that church and they will not be the last. Many people have reported a very large shadow jumping in front of their car, seeing some sort of strange, odd-shaped, large dog nearby, and seeing the glowing red eyes. So the question is, why does this dog do that? What's its purpose, and why does it stop at that bridge? Well, there's a lot of theories. Some people believe that when the water crosses and forms that cross, it holds some sort of power to it that this dog cannot go across. Others think that he can absolutely cross that if he wants to, but his purpose is to guard the church and the cemetery, so he really doesn't need to go that far. So if you're ever lucky or unlucky enough, depending on how you look at it, to be driving by that little country church on a full moon, just remember to look out for dogs, you know, that may jump at you behind tombstones. Now, I did visit this church when I was visiting Boone recently, and I was not able to walk through the cemetery, which makes me so sad because I was so excited to, but the gate was locked and I didn't want to disrespect anyone, like the property owners or anything dwelling there uh, by going in, so I did not. But I did take some footage of the outside, and it is quite a beautiful church, and it's a beautiful cemetery, and I plan on attending a church service. Um the next time I'm in town just so that I have an excuse to go look around and things like that. 
But um, yeah, here is that footage. I hope you guys enjoyed the spooky little history lesson and I hope you decide to visit. Um, if you've ever gotten to go inside and walk around, please let me know and show me footage if you took it. All right, that's all for me. Here's that footage.